Um, my name is uh, Darren uh, Protulapak. I'm a civil engineer. Uh, I've been in the hydro business for 30 years and um, I've been brought on to uh, manage the project, uh, the regional Rusumu Falls hydroelectric uh, development uh, and try and push it to completion as uh, quick as possible. Uh, well, thank you so much. So, uh, for a viewer, run us through about this project, the Rusumu Power Plant. Okay, I can give you uh, uh, more granular view. The, um, we have two main contractors. We have electromechanical contractor um, uh, Andritz, uh, Austrian-German uh, company, um, a very uh, respectable company with uh, good quality equipment. Um, they're providing the, uh, the turbines, the generators, uh, they're uh, creating the switch yard um, and uh, all the equipment uh, in the switch yard to allow the power to flow out to uh, the three shareholder countries. Uh, the other contractor we have on the project is uh, a Chinese firm. They're called, it's a joint venture, uh, CGCOC and JWHC. And, and they're here to do the civil works. That would be the building of the dam, uh, the tunnel, um, uh, the powerhouse, the tail race, and providing access to the, uh, to the, um, to the project area for, for the electromechanical Andritz uh, contractor. Um, if I just may add, the project uh, is regional in name. Uh, it's owned by three countries, as I think everybody's aware, uh, with uh, Rwanda having uh, a third ownership, Burundi and then Tanzania with their uh, one-third uh, ownership. Uh, the powerhouse uh, is located um, in Tanzania, and the electrification, the distribution out to the three countries is uh, located in Rwanda. It's actually very close to where I am at this very moment. Um, so Rwanda has the switch yard and um, they're the ones that will be sending the power to the three countries depending on the demand in those three countries. Uh, so can you run us through other key facts about the project like what is the start date, what is the end date and what is the capacity of the pro uh, what is the type of what type of technology are we talking about? Okay. And uh, uh, the start date, the completion date, when should uh, the countries expect power? Okay, well let's start with the uh, the simple uh, question, when did it start? The project uh, came to fruition uh, in 2016, but the project actually started on site in 2017, uh, early 2017. Unfortunately, the civil contractor had many delays and uh, the project really didn't start uh, until late 2017, if not into 2018. So the electromechanical guy was, was delayed in his aspects right from the get-go in early 2017. Uh, it is really a, a three-year project, a 36-month project, but uh, as I stated, we had delays getting into the project uh, uh, for many reasons. Uh, the civil contractor wasn't able to, to perform his work uh, in 2017, so we lost a year on, on, the, on the process. Um, at this point in time, um, the rate of production hasn't been um, terrific. I, I think it's been on the same trajectory and productive uh, rate since the beginning when the civil contractor started his work. That has added some additional delay um, and then COVID has uh, really bitten into the project and uh, given us additional, unfortunately, additional delays. Um, we all are aware that the ministers are demanding power at the end of 2021, uh, but to this point in time we still have uh, delays uh, to, to address and to make up lost time. Uh, we have, we're targeting uh, first power at the end of 2021, but the likelihood it's going to slip into uh, early uh, to mid 2022 with full completion um, probably in the third quarter of 2022. Um, the civil contractor will be finished his work February, March next year, but he has set the uh, electromechanical guy back uh, a considerable amount of time. So, um, uh, so that's my status. We see it's a regional project in terms of personnel. Uh, how, what is the configuration? That, how many numbers are we talking about? That's that's a very that's a very good question. The uh, right now we're about uh, 700 workers all in, including management. Um, I think the civil contractors around 400 and some odd 
uh, people and the electromechanical person. Civil contractor is 450 and the electromechanical is about 160. Um, in terms of the workforce, um, we are uh, hiring from the three countries. Uh, there's a mandate to, to balance the, the labor component, the unskilled portion of each of these main contractor um, uh, uh, contracts. So the civil contractor has 450 people. Uh, they may have 60 national people here and then it breaks down into support staff in Tanzania, drivers and what have you. But they're not considered unskilled so really the balancing act between the three countries occurs at the unskilled labor uh, level. Uh, and then we have a gender balance as well, the female uh, male ratio and that's also being addressed by the two contractors. Um, the civil contractor as I said is phasing out as we speak towards February he should be almost entirely complete his workforce will drop whereas electromechanical people will increase and uh, and work will, will progress. So it is regional in nature um, even the management structure the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the from the board to the steering committee uh, down to the uh, the management group, uh, we have members from all three countries, so they're very well uh, they're very well represented. So it is truly a re regional regional format. Yes, uh, we see independent power producers producing power and selling it to government. Uh, this one, we see a company. Well, could you explain to the viewer the whole configuration? And we see companies involved, three countries involved, and forming up a company uh, to actually generate this power. Uh, so what is the configuration, who are the financials, and what, uh, when you power into the national grids, uh, what is the configuration in terms of financials? The funding comes from the World Bank, 100%. Uh, They've given the three countries um, money to build a powerhouse, uh, an overlarged and large switch yard, which I can talk about a little later if need be, and, uh, but also to deal with social programs. So the funding agency um, is using this project, it's a regional project, it's on the boundary of two countries to uh, create um, uh, a bond between the three countries to work together and to develop uh, a very good project um, but also to generate power and share according to the demand and the payments. So there is a special purpose vehicle which uh, is separate to what we're talking about but that group is called uh, uh, RPCL, uh, Resumer Power Company Limited, and they are responsible for collecting the money from the three countries on who buys the power. So it, it really depends on how they, how they manage, how they manage their, um, their uh, processes at the operations level, at the company level. The one thing I want to add about our switchyard is uh, we paid extra money for it. It does take a bit more effort but uh, it's a, a double the size of a, a, a traditional switchyard. This switchyard will allow these three countries and even other countries later to wheel power through the switchyard in and out and synchronize in the future. Today we're not synchronized. So all we can do is take uh, one, two, three generators, send it to one country or one generator per country or two, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, the outgoing lines for this project are very robust. It can handle 90 megawatts thereabouts. We have an 80 megawatt plant, so one country can swallow all the power if they decide to take all the power. Then it's left to the special purpose vehicle, RPCL, and their management structure and how they're going to operate to collect the funds from the country that is buying the power. So if Rwanda doesn't need the power, they plan in advance, this month we're not going to use the power and Tanzania needs it, Tanzania buys the money goes back in the company and they, they, they share it according to their agreements. So what investment ask are we talking about here besides? Uh, in terms of the, uh, in terms of the, uh, the expenditures, uh, the civil contractor um, will be no more than 120 million. They have an original cost about 75 million, but we've enlarged the, the switchyard. We've added additional features um, and escalation has created increase. Um, so it's no more than 120, it's probably going to be at 110 million. The electromechanical company would be no more than 60 million. So it's about 180 million of assets that will belong to the three countries. 
through the special purpose vehicle, RPCL. The one thing I want to add, you mentioned independent power producers and you're going to be seeing them tomorrow, I believe. You haven't, you haven't got a powerhouse to look at because they're in the, the fruition stage. But the difference between a government project that we have here is, is the quality and the time that we put into to make it very robust. And if you had a chance to look at the thick columns and, and what have you, it's, it's a different approach to building powerhouses. And it's, uh, it's a good approach, in my, my opinion. Independent power producers do a good job as well, but, but they're, they're going in a different direction. A country here is a very, ro we have a very robust powerhouse, very solid powerhouse. So it's uh, something to be said about the quality. I haven't visited other powerhouses in this local region, but I've heard they may be having some teething issues. We hope to have all our teething issues sorted out by this time next year and uh, then give 30, 40 years of trouble free. Okay, let's conclude this. So as we conclude this, could you look in the camera and talk to the, the key, uh, key stakeholders in this project? Here we're talking of governments, we're talking of the financials, yes, basically those two. And, and the, the population in the three countries, what should they hear at this point in time? Well, I think the three countries, the, uh, the funding, uh, the funders and the local population as well as the population of the countries should realize that you're getting a very high quality uh, powerhouse. It's uh, located on the boundary of, of two great countries and uh, I think you can use this powerhouse as a showpiece for how three countries can work together to uh, create uh, joint uh, uh, ventures as such as this. Uh, there's other rivers that, and lakes and water bodies that, that can be shared. Um, I want to say that uh, having been in the hydro business uh, for 30 years, the, the local communities also benefit in the long term. Uh, so the communities uh, on both sides of the, the border in the Rasuma village should uh, prosper. <clears throat> you should see great growth. I can see the governments investing in, in, the, uh, in the border. And, uh, <clears throat> I think, uh, I think it's a wise investment and I think there's more to come in terms of learning how to share, uh, share power, share construction, share engineering, um, not in any particular order, but also to have a showpiece to educate people and bring them back to the area to train them on hydropower and how to work together and how to create um, a joint venture on, on the border. So I think that's what I'd like to, to leave uh, as a message for. Uh, for the bank and the government, financials. financials, yes. And for the financials, the World Bank. Uh, well, they uh, they're they're part of this uh, process. Uh, I think uh, they uh, they're they're a demanding crowd, but I think uh, they create uh, uh, good output uh, when it's all said and done. So I'm happy to say that uh, this project is well funded by the World Bank, and uh, they keep us going in the right direction to create high quality and to bring three countries to, to work together as an independent uh, fourth party uh, from the three countries. So that's how I want to end.